Hi everyone! Welcome back to Window Chats with Robin, the Instagram Live podcast where I sit by my window and chat with very interesting people. Today's guest is Julie Miguel. So excited to chat with her. We met, oh my gosh, I want to say back in November doing a hosting workshop and she's fabulous. She's doing a lot of stuff and I'm so excited to chat with her. Okay, she is, oh my gosh, I have to read. Julie, you do too much. A television cook, a food content producer, a food stylist, a recipe developer, and a food blogger who was also in MasterChef Canada, Fridge Wars. She's on the Maryland Dennis Show. You did a lot. I, I had so much fun creeping her in the healthiest way possible. Uh, I'm fascinated by her, and I'm going to invite her in. Here we go. Okay. Will it work today, though? I This is... Uh, da, 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 da. There's so many new options on Instagram. to work because good vibes for friday yes oh my god it worked <laughs> i maybe i'm too low I, I i set up like a bunch of books hoping that this would be high enough but are you wait are you wearing headphones because it's weird if i'm wearing headphones and you're not it's okay if you aren't <laughs> just for this <laughs> oh my gosh okay okay so we have to do the audio test that will Instagram, okay, I'm gonna say something and then you say something and then hopefully we don't talk over each other as has happened before. Okay. Oh no way, is it working? Okay, wait, yeah, I think it's working. It's working. Is there a delay on your, <laughs> it's, I, I hear you. Okay. okay, we did it. I hear, okay. I hear you. Goodbye. I hear, I hear you as well. I think it's working. I think we're great. Yes, we're good. Are you happy good. with your lighting? You look fabulous. I, I tried to situate myself near a window, it's keeping in, in theme of, of your podcast. So um, I love I love your view. That looks like a lot nicer than mine. I feel like it looks cool, right? I found this one yeah. window in my place where I go, yeah, it looks legit. I live downtown. What's up? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what I go for. I do not live downtown, so you'll see a lot of grass, which I guess is, I mean, a hot commodity. What? Yeah. Days, so what does what does grass look like? What? <laughs> Very green, very green. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a backyard. What is this concept? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I do. I do love it. I, well, I have kids, so it's the only way. I mean, you say that now. I'm thinking of people that live in condos with kids, and now we're shaming them, and I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems like it would be fun to live in a condo with kids too, because they've got like amenities, and you're like a walk to places. You don't have to get them into the car, so it could be really fun too. That's true. I like that. See, that's a good save. There you go. Live on air. Okay. <laughs> Julie, can I tell you, I had so much fun in the weirdest way possible creeping you. I learned so much about you. Just going like, I went through the Instagram, then I just Googled your name and I go, you are fascinating. No. Because we met, you know, back in Thank November. You. And yes. I, I thought, okay, okay, this girl, she's fascinating. She knows her stuff. Fascinating is the only word I can think of using today. I usually lean into one adjective and you are fascinating. <laughs> But I, well, when I first, I'm just, when I first met you, I want to say, I was like, so we were doing those little like voice over, it was the voiceover class. And you know, we're all like, never, like, I've never done a voiceover before. And so like, when she had us present, and all of a sudden you present, I'm like, what <laughs> was that? Like, so talented. And I was like, okay, I have to hang out with this girl. I I like yeah, doing so. voices. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that was that was so fun. I'm like, oh, so this impressive. Is, this is great. I've been training yeah. for this. Cool. Uh, no, uh, but you know what? And I said this to Jules too. I'll, we'll give a shout out to Jules Fitzsimmons at Jules Casting. Yes. And Ashley Greco. Uh, they do a workshop twice a year and it was just the most positive atmosphere. And I just met fabulous people like yourself. Ooh, new adjective. Yeah. And it was just so welcoming. You know, there was no judgment, no ego, unless it was me. Uh, I'm like, I'm too for this no uh <laughs> not no, at honestly, all it was, it everyone was, it was, was amazing it was really like everyone to be there and then like everyone i feel like i'm still supporting people from that workshop because everyone was so genuine and that's that's what strikes me about you you're so honest with who you are that i'm I, like i need i'm fascinated Thank like you. i just don't know how people can be so honest online to be and honest i don't I, to be honest I don't yeah, have like uh, time not to be honest. I feel like that is uh, a lot of work 
<laughs> that and I just do not have the capacity to lie about who I am. <laughs> so <laughs> But okay, so but you share so much of yourself, right? Like it's it's yeah, amazing. I Cause I, I feel, you know what? I, like, I feel honestly, cause I feel like I know you. I went, I'm like, Oh, she did a kitchen reno. Let's talk. You know, we'll go off the air and discuss renos. Yeah. Uh, that's a totally. journey in and of itself. Yeah. Well, I, I live a normal life. Um, I, you know, for a long time when I first started in this and I guess we can, we can get back to that, but I was, I was iffy about what I should share online because, you know, there was the people who had their, um, I guess, I don't know, work account. And then they had their regular, like real life account that was private. And I contemplated doing that for a while, but then I was like, that seems like a lot of work, first of all. Um, and then, you know, secondly, I was like, what I do, you know, right now is basically sharing my life. And okay, I don't like the term influencer, but you know, just showing people, you know, little bits of my life and, and what the products I use and the things I use and the services I use to if it, it you know as a benefit for them like they could use this too um so i figured like why wouldn't i join those two things together because it only makes sense it's basically what is marketing the product is like you know how i use it in my life so anyways that's that's how i got to this point where i'm like i'm just gonna share everything i mean like i don't share everything because that's impossible but you know, the parts that I do share and I've connected with so many great people online uh, like yourself. And um, so I feel like it's a benefit to share because everyone could use, you know, your like if you just even talk about your experience, everyone can use that. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's not only about food and, and stuff like that. It's, it's everything, all encompassing. Life includes so many different layers. So I feel like it's, a benefit to share it because you will get it back. You'll get like, you know, the, the, you'll meet all these great people and it'll all come back to you. So I feel like it's, it's worth it. Oh, I, I'm influenced to overshare now. That's, it's going to, I feel like I'm sharing enough now. I'm challenging myself <laughs> to do a comedy sketch every day. Don't do that people. It's a stupid idea, but that's a it's a commitment. It, they're great really though. Is. I'm loving, I'm loving, I'm loving what you do. I think you're hilarious. And, um, I, 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 I'm watching them every day. So at least some of I appreciate it. So you and my husband. Great. Okay. I got my two, my two viewers. Amazing. <laughs> Keep but doing on, it. You know what? Doing, doing that, I only bring it up. I'm not trying to promote myself. I do it. I bring it up because doing that, I felt so vulnerable and I thought, how do people do this with their real lives? You know what I mean? Cause I put a little bit of myself in my comedy, but not like, Hey guys, here's everything I'm going through. Here's my life. Uh, but I, I see what you like, because I feel like I know you so well, like even just meeting you in person, you were just so authentic and just such a bubbly energy and I'm drawn to you. Thank you. And then like your, your yeah. online persona, it is what you see is what you get, you know? And I think that's great. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I definitely, uh, what you see is what you get. I don't hide anything and I'm, very honest. I mean, like, like I said before, I just feel like life is too short not to be honest. Are you, did your kids consent to being in your videos? They're adorable, by the way. You know what I mean? Um, but are they, uh, oh, we have to do another video. Okay. You, you know what? It, it, so certain, certain things, um, I, I have to like get their consent ahead of time before I give like, if it's a brand thing, um, I get their consent ahead of time and I even pay them for that stuff. They don't do it for free. Wow. Um, I feel cool. like, I feel like that's very important. Like, um, you know, I don't want to say like exploiting your kids is like a thing people do, but, uh, I mean, I think your kids should have the choice. So I give them the yeah. choice before I pitch, I pitch an idea. Um, I tell them what I'm going to pay them and then, um, I do it. And then when it's like just regular stuff, like, you know, Dylan at hockey, uh, or like Dean doing his, like his acting, I mean, I, I, do, I definitely ask them before I post it. And there are times where they're like, please don't post that. And I definitely won't. So they're little people and they have opinions. So I definitely get their, um, their consent. It's their input, <laughs> right? I love that. Yeah. I love that you pay them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's just and a role model. I try, to, it. Yeah. I try to include them too in, in some contracts. Like, uh, you know, okay, you can, you're paying me, but can you pay? Cause you know, they pay child actors like a yeah. child uh it, like whatever right so i'm like 
if you want them in it, like, because sometimes they say that we want your kids in it. It's like, okay, well then pay them, you know, because like they, I love they that you paid. asked that though. It's true. Exactly. They should be every, it's individual, right? right. It's not, you're not just buying a package. You're, I mean, maybe, but also support, like your kids should get paid individually. Yeah. I love that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's no, uh, I can't, I'm, I'm just, that's such a boss babe move. I love it. Uh, <laughs> But okay, so I so I would love to know the this is turning into an interview, even though I wanted it to be casual, because I can't not ask you questions as I'm deep diving through <laughs> your life. Uh, so I, I went on your daily tiramisu uh, website and oh like, God, I that, what started that your in... food journey. Well, I don't want to say I haven't anything. updated that yeah. website. Like I just reached out to the girl who does the maintenance on my site yesterday. I'm like, we should probably do maintenance. So like I haven't posted on that site in a long time. Because people so like me will go on it. Okay. <laughs> I know, like, it, it is important. It's important. It totally is. And I should, I should look at it more. Um, but basically, how I started it, it was a way to basically leverage my MasterChef Canada TV um, experience. So yeah, so basically, like, I mean, I'll give you like the quickest rundown I possibly can. I always enjoyed cooking, loved cooking. Um, I lost my mom at the age of 15 and took on more of a cooking role in my house. Um, but also really loved it, you know, cooked because I had to, but also cooked because, um, because I wanted to, you know, I used to read blogs when like blogs first came out. I used to put recipes together and like plan menus. Anyways, um, I never became like anything in cooking because I just didn't think there was like money in it. Like, I mean, I, I heard the struggles that chefs go through and I was just like, oh, I want a family and I want to get married and I don't want any of that. So, you know, I went my other route. Um, I actually still work in, um, in a job that's, uh, I guess, legal and economics is the, the background you need for this job. Um, I still work in this job. So basically, I, I went that route and I continued to um, pursue that career. And then um, I guess after my second my first son so after my first son um i heard that mastership canada was coming to canada um and i actually met gordon ramsay a year before it had come to canada and he was like launching some like line here at the bay so it was my favorite show at the time i was watching the u.s version i just like i loved it and so i saw him met him and i was like listen like i heard masterships coming um i'm gonna be on the show um, and I'm going to like, I'm going to do really well. Like I might win. So he was like, he's like, okay, well, good luck. Good to meet you. Uh, whatever. And then the, the, uh, following year, they actually did like opened up auditions. So I put that in my audition, like I, sorry, in my online application and they called me right away. Um, like literally like hours after I put in the application, uh, gave me a phone interview. Then they, they invited me to like the VIP, uh, uh, audition in Toronto and like basically like doors just kept opening it was like I honestly like I hate to say it because so people have applied like 15 different times and like they didn't get in but like it was just really easy um so made it past the producers audition and like on camera audition they were basically like we'll call you in two weeks I was like okay and like I don't know what that means um like I just like I thought like leaving there I'd be like yeah you're on the show but no it doesn't work that way <laughs> Well, also, we'll call you is usually code for thanks, but right? no thanks. So I was like, oh, I don't know how to take that. Anyways, two weeks to the day, uh, they call me and they're like, you made the top 50. And I was like, the hell does that mean? And they're like, you basically have to take like six weeks off work. Will your employer give you six weeks off work? And I was like, I, I literally just started this job. I was like, I just started. Like, what am I supposed to tell them? And he's like, well, you can't tell them what you're doing because like they'd have to sign like an NDA. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is like, why did I do this? So anyways, got it all worked out, did the show. Uh, I came in seventh place. Um, and uh, after the show, so when the show airs, because it was the first season, the Marilyn Dennis show was um, featuring the top 10. So the, every week that they, someone got kicked off, they would do a segment on the Marilyn Dennis show. I was a huge fan of Marilyn Dennis. Like I had gone to watch her show in, live and I was just like a huge fan. So I got to do a segment and I actually did like my gender reveal on her show because I was pregnant with my second <laughs> child. So I was like, oh, I do gender reveal on, on the show and like tell my whole family what I'm having. 
Um, so, so I did her show. She, we got along so well. She was like, I want you back on the show. Absolutely. You know, like have your kid do whatever and like come back. So I, I actually did. I ended up going back. I started my blog in the meantime too, like just to like, you know, have send people somewhere, you know? Right. Um, and I started posting recipes online and all that stuff. And, um, yeah. And then, so that's how I, I kind of got started. Brands started reaching out to me, um, still working my regular job. Uh, but I was on that leave for, for that year. So like, that's when I kind of like really built this food business that I do. Um, I started working in like uh, digital, like magazine uh, production and doing like recipes and, and food styling and, and pictures. Like I just worked like crazy. I just did everything. I'm like, I'm learning this industry. So that's what I did. And um, I actually didn't end up going back to work right away. I, I, I ended up taking five years off of my job. Um, like I just took a leave. And basically, I just did this full time. And it was great. Like, it is great. It's still great. Um, but something I realized is like, doing your passion full time, it starts to become less because you have to take on everything. Like, everything yeah right? like even, even the things <laughs> yeah. you don't want to take on and so it became like I started not to like it as much so I was like okay I mm -hmm. need balance in my life also went through a pretty bad divorce um you know uh like life got really tough and I was like well I have to go back to my regular job it's like the best time to because I need benefits I need you know right. in, like a steady income and I just need more balance in my life so for the past six years, I've been doing both. Um, but it's like the perfect balance because I do love my job. I like law and economics was like, a, is still a passion of mine. Love it. Um, I'm a public servant. So like I, I help people, uh, which I love. And then also, you know, my food work is like my creative outlet. And I, I, I'm not as busy as I was in the food work, but it's, it's only the jobs that I actually want to take on and like the brands that I want to work with yeah um I'll well, also for you can be more selective now exactly like thank goodness yeah. like I work I worked for mm -hmm. this but it's like yeah. finally like I can do that um and also like for was it the the year before oh the year after I got divorced uh City Line uh the show City Line asked me to audition and I was like and I always wanted to be on City Line, but I was like, I have no idea how to like penetrate that. Like, I have no idea. I wasn't on the Marilyn Dennis show anymore. I was I was just doing like morning TV at the time. And then they called me and they were like, we want to do an audition. I was like, okay. Because they're like, we saw you on your Instagram stories and we really like your, you know, your personality. I was like, oh, dang. Like, I guess those Instagram stories are important. Um, so a little note to all you people out there that like. Seriously. You know, wow. <laughs> right? Okay. Um, so anyway. Okay did the audition and I've been doing uh, segments on city line ever since. <laughs> so four years. So yeah, that's how like daily tea to me, Sue, which is my blog started. Cause like just leveraging, you know, just a, a place to send people like, here's my recipes. Here's where you could find out a bit about me. And then, uh, yeah. So, and, and now I'm here doing, still doing food work and, uh, living a more balanced life. <laughs> I mean, look, balance is, uh, once you find it, it's great, but getting there is a journey. Oh my God. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> oh, uh, Chef Noel says, hey. Uh, oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, there, I know there's comments, and so I'm trying to yeah. read them, but then I forget because I'm just enthralled by your life journey of <laughs> this happened, and then this happened, and next thing you know, I'm doing this, and I go, oh my goodness, this is... It's just, it's that's just like crazy amazing. because like, there's so many like little avenues I can go down. Um, like just so many things have happened in the past, in my thirties, I turned 40 this year and I'm just like, ah, like closing the book on my thirties. Cause they were pretty fucked up. Like, oh, I don't know if I can swear on here. Sorry. They were pretty, oh, we did. It's fine. I swear all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You know what? Crazy. But I was creating a reel and I can't say the word shitty on my Instagram reel. I'm saying it here, but in general on Instagram, shitty is a swear word. So yeah, they swore. They, they bleed, they it. bleed yeah. it. I so, no, I go. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. So, anyways, yeah. I mean, that's the only way I can really describe it. I'm very like, I practice a lot of gratitude now because I'm like, I have come a long way, but it's like crazy. Like the, the you know, mm -hmm. the the, the journey. Actually, it, I was on um, a journey. I was not expecting half of that because you know, I'm like, <laughs> oh, how did this happen? Oh, this happened because of this, and then that. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 pretty crazy. Um, yeah. So that's, that's pretty much my life. Um, now I, I work two jobs. 
um, which I need both. I mean, I'm a, I'm a single mom um, to two kids, right? So right. I, I work all the time, but the food work doesn't really feel like work because I do it evenings and weekends. I incorporate my kids. I incorporate my family. Like, it seems like it's fun, right? Like, it's creative. Um, and I'm dating someone now who's got two kids. So, you know, there's, there's sometimes there's like four kids in my house and it's craziness, but I like, I absolutely love it. So, um, things are good. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. It, it, it's amazing to, because again, I really did crave you and I saw you were doing like travel blogs. You influenced me for PEI Yeah. and just to, to go on that journey. To now you're like, you know, finding a balance and okay, I'll do this for, cause I feel like I, when, when I do something, you know, my passion consistently and it starts to feel like a job and then I start to hate it. That's so unhealthy. Cause I don't want to hate my passion. Totally. My passion is my passion. You know what I mean? It's important. Yeah. You have, you have to protect it. And the way that you protect it is you put boundaries on everything else. <laughs> it's hard. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I never but even that, thought of the word boundary before COVID. I'm like, that's a thing I can request space from right? people. What? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's funny. Um, you were talking about like PEI. So that's like a whole journey in itself because when we, we actually, me and my boys actually moved back into our family home the year of COVID in, in 2020. So we, we had to move out for a year, um, you know, for reasons I did not talk about on Instagram. That's fair. Um, moved. Yeah, so moved back um, in 2020, literally a month before the, the, the pandemic hit. And I was just like, this is crazy. I'm like back in this, like my old marital home, you know, with my kids, without my, my you know, my ex-husband. This is so weird. Pandemic hits. I'm like, oh my God, what the hell is going on? And then, so I, I like that summer, I decided let's drive across Canada. <laughs> so that's what we did. Like we, I literally like, I was like, how long does it take to drive to Bent? <laughs> so I, it literally took us two weeks to like go there and back but um such a good experience and then the following year we went east so that's where you read that like the like the highlights about pi and stuff that was well it's um, even do you see your own video editing too it was beautiful i was very captivated oh um yeah no i do everything myself <laughs> i can't it was work that, like and it was just a, i'm like how did she make this oh my i was just going on this journey with you it was really well done. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It was well, I mean, you got to keep uh, it short. You know what I mean? You got like, it's short, but also nice pictures. Okay. This girl right. knows what she's doing. Right. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it was, it was so much fun. And like, um, I did, I didn't want to do too much content because the, the purpose of those trips was to spend time with my boys and to like explore and like just Makes do sense. something like crazy together, you know, um, on our own. So it was, such an amazing experience and like my boys still talk about it today I love that yeah it was fun <laughs> do, your, do your kids ever go yeah my mom's on television no big deal you know oh do they god never oh god no they do okay. not care at all like they, they literally don't care I actually when when I get home like when they get home and like one of my city line episodes has aired that day I'm like guys check it out because I just want like some feedback like just give me some feedback they'll want they'll be like cool and they'll like walk away like mid segment. I'm like, no, look guys, look what I do here. No, they don't care. They do not care at all. Like not even a little bit. <laughs> so okay, do you struggle with watching yourself on TV though? I used to. Um, I, I used to, and then I had to take this course for work actually, like a presentations course and public speaking course, and they made you watch yourself. And I was like, this is. I was literally like, oh, like this is the most painful thing in the world. And they made us watch it in front of people. Like it was painful. Um, and I feel like the more you do it, the easier it gets. So in the beginning too, it was still painful. Um, yeah. And even now, even now, like when I feel like I didn't do my best in a segment, I'll literally watch it first without looking at myself, just hearing the sound, just to like mm. prime, prime myself. And then I'll watch it. <laughs> but it's, it's, I mean, it's still hard. It's still hard. I do it because I feel like you need to do that to like, improve and yeah constantly absolutely. grow yeah but um I it's it's very tough <laughs> it's like it's hard, it, it's hard to watch but it's though. like look at this growth though you know that's what I feel like I used to really struggle with watching myself and now I'm at a point where I can go okay this is what I would do next time instead of beating myself up over it I go okay I can be better you know instead of oh that was oh, absolutely. so, so terrible stupid why'd you do that whatever or I'm like okay this is what I will do next time should this happen you know right right, right. and then also like I think 
um, in the beginning of this, I was so inexperienced and I was hanging around the wrong influences because I was hanging oh. around people who maybe had like a twang of jealousy, uh, didn't want to see me, you know, grow in this space. So they right. gave me some bad advice. And so it's a little triggering, oh, like when, when something goes wrong, because they're like, I'm thinking about that. I'm like, oh, maybe they were right. Maybe they were right 10 years ago. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, I still go back to that every once in a while, especially when, you know, you haven't worked in a while or whatever. Like you just, you kind of like, it's constant. It's like a constant exercise of like confidence. Yeah. So yeah. The reason I keep doing these, I need to challenge myself to be uncomfortable every day. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, yeah and like honestly like sometimes like I'll post things like I posted um, a reel yesterday about dance and I'm like I, I can't even, I, I watched it back once but I'm like I can't even watch this back again and like it's hard even to look at comments because I'm just like I just want to pretend it doesn't exist because I wanted to put it out there yeah because dance was one of the things I said I could never dance in front of everyone anyone like never ever it would never happen and so like I literally did that to like challenge myself because I'm like who cares <laughs> like I do everything else like, why does this matter? And so well, uh, I have that. It's, a, it's and, a vulnerable, it's very vulnerable, right? When yeah. you're like, okay, I'm trying something, I'm going to share it. And then, you know, people judge because they do. And some people support and some people. Eh, and, they don't. and it's, it's funny because like people, I, I'm sure there are people who are judging on skill level when that's not the reason I posted it at all. Like I'm not posting it to say, look what a friggin' amazing dancer I am. I'm literally posting it to say something I've always wanted to do. Um, it's possible you know, I've only done it for nine months and like, I can actually like do one whole like piece of choreography. It's pretty awesome. Um, but like, I do get comments every now and then like, uh, oh, like, you know, you should be doing this and you should be doing this. And I'm like, oh, oh I'm so not... a, little, a little more of a turnout. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> you're a tire wasn't in there, life. not impressed. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, anyways, but it's all good. It's all good. But, it, but there is something I love because it's so easy to express yourself through dance. And I go, oh my God, she's a dancer too. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I love because movement is so important to me. And I feel like there's either it's like movement or song and it's just such a great way to express yourself and get into your body. Well, so when you were sharing your that, I loved it. Yeah, yeah it does. I know. You finished I, 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 I woke up this morning, uh, like a story about dance. I woke up this morning and just wasn't having the best morning. Got some emails that really peed me like that pissed me off and so anyways i'm like okay i gotta do this thing with with robin um i gotta get like into like a better space so i threw on some whitney houston and i yes! danced her on my first floor like Stop li <laughs> that is my go-to oh literally my yes. literally oh, like 10 always. minutes before i jumped on with you i'm like oh god i, I need to do something because or else i'm oh. gonna be like the biggest downer in this live so that's what i did it works it's it very effective. A good Whitney. Uh, I want to dance with somebody. Yes. I'm yeah, that was, okay. that was the one. That's the one. You can't not That's dance to that. It, That's the one. Oh my goodness, <laughs> A fellow Whitney fan. That that made my day. So funny. That's because I was in the same kind of like. Oh, I'm a little off today. I'm belting out a tune. Cool. Let's do it. Uh, get in my body. But I, it's, it's yeah. just so freeing when you're like letting out your inner artist. Oh my god, that sounds so lame. But I believe it, even though I didn't sound yeah. convincing. Yeah. It's, it's so true and people feel silly doing it, but it's like, no, just do it. I do it in front of my kids now. Like I used to not do that in front of my kids because I was like, they're just looking at me like, what the heck? Um, but now I do it in front of them and like, I, I noticed they do it too. Like they dance a little more now. Like when music comes on and they like, it makes them feel good. I'm like, oh, this is like rubbing off on them. Well, you're giving people permission to, you know, do what they want to do, right? I would feel so subconscious. 100%. Oh my gosh. If someone was around me, I'd be like, I can't sing. I can't dance. And then I'm like, eh, I'm going to do it. Join. Don't join. Walk away. Right. That's fine. Right. Right. Exactly. For the most part, people like it. Uh, people find it a positive experience. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, don't go busting a move at a funeral. That's a faux pas. But if, right. for the most right. part, live your life. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Some uh, <laughs> confusing moments to choose to <laughs> dance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh i okay i have so many questions about food segments because okay. i was watching one where you said you were giggling too much and in my opinion you were fabulous uh it was you were selling some or like you were doing some pumpkin spice promotional thing oh and it was essentially oh, yeah, making was the different coffee drinks and i'm like did, did you have to bring your own blender do you have to set that up beforehand like who's in charge of the setup and developing recipes what what's going on there i think it was breakfast television that one 
Okay, so that one, okay, so segments, this is the way they work. I'm pitched, like, okay, first they say they want me for the segment, yay. Then they tell me what the theme of the segment is. Uh, sometimes it's branded, like the one you saw on, on breakfast television. So right. I'm very restricted. It's, it's a, that's a harsh word, but I'm, I'm, I have to stay within um, their guidelines of what they want in market and then also uh, how they want to show the product and all of that. So, you know, my recipes have to be approved and all that sort of thing. But I do all the recipe development myself. Um, so, so even for, um, for City Line, for example, I, they give me a theme. I give them some ideas. They tell me which ones they want to go with. I develop those recipes. And then me and the producer go through like, a, go through like production notes and like how we're going to block the segment and how Tracy's going to get involved and, and all of that. Right. I have to bring, so this is the thing about City Line. Um, you have to do your own food styling. You have to bring all your own food. Um, I think it, de it deters a lot of people because so not only do you have to have a lot like, of work, you have to bring your yourself ready like hair makeup which is a lot for people i'm used to it now um you also have to bring all your food um you also have to style all your food and bring like bring it in portions like it's it's, it's yeah it's in the form of a demo right so you have to have one made one half made you know like it's it's very it's a thing right a lot of people it, it, i think a skill that a lot of people are good on tv but they're not good at that part so i i, I it's hard to do a show like that right but marilyn dennis um, the way they structure their show, they have a makeup and hair person on the show. So they can help you with that. They also do, um, they have a food stylist. So you don't, you show up. You show up and you And you're, yes, your I'm a queen. Hello. Right. Yes. You just do your Talent's thing. here. Um, I'm yeah. in my trailer. Yeah. So, so City Line, it's, it's different. It's, it's a different experience. Um, I've become, because I've done so many shoots and segments I it's for me it's like I know what I'm doing it's a lot of work but I love it and I know what I'm doing um but it's uh I think for a lot of people it can be like very daunting like I gotta bring all that stuff like it, and then also how do you bring I'm just picturing like 500 Tupperwares what oh my, <laughs> luggage 500 Tupperwares 500 Tupperwares yeah exactly that's what I bring and also like my, my trunk is full of like even like the styling stuff like the placemats the cutting board yeah the utensils. Oh, you they have bring a lot of stuff there all, now. okay they have a lot of stuff there, but you can't depend. Like if you really need something, bring it because like it might be gone because the other chefs work out of that kitchen and like take stuff home by accident. And like, so right. you, you pretty much have to bring everything that you need. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's, um, and like by when I'm done it, I'm, it's just such a, it's very, I, I feel very fulfilled and it's, uh, it's a good experience. And the you team is yeah, friggin' amazing. So, I mean, like it makes it, amazing makes it easy I love I love the team there and they're just so supportive so it's like they make it really fun I mean honestly you make it fun because it is a hard thing I always get nervous for those segments because I know you only have a certain amount of time and I'm like oh they got to fit a lot in okay no no one else talk to me I know you're hosting but I'm doing my cooking <laughs> thing here you know what I'd be like okay yeah haha -ha, very funny joke oh god my sauce um stop but that's me. the thing shut right? off the camera you know what I mean just so much multitasking to this day, they tell me, Julie, yes, you have to show the recipe, but it's not only about the recipe. It's about like the entertainment factor too, the engagement with the host. Try and like chat, try and be more chatty with Tracy, but because I'm so like, <gasps> um, so that's that's something I constantly have to work on is the like, you know, just making it look like graceful. <laughs> yeah, we're having a good chat, and I'm not burning my food. It's all good. So like that's that, why you that, have to dance now. You'll be like, yes, a little dance and some right. food. You're welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to find a balance. It's 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 hard. That's like one of the skills that like I'm constantly working on. Is like, oh my God, how can I just be like more chill in this moment? <laughs> well, there's so like such a balancing act of okay, uh, nothing. Bur that's uh, between something burning or spilling versus what if someone eats something and they just spit it out. Not saying that you can't cook but I'm just saying like what if someone's allergic to something or they have a sensitivity to so cilantro you don't know about you know something like that what happens? well look, we, we we pretty much know the sensitivities even of the production staff before going in like they'll oh, be like okay. don't bring this in because okay. someone's severely allergic so like we know that and I also get um, Tracy's comments like do you generally like this stuff like this because I'm going to make you one to try like do you like it or should I make you something else so like we'll mm. talk about it yeah I, I'm sure she eats things she doesn't like uh, I'm sure she does, but like, 
it is what it is. It's the only reason and I like, couldn't host that show. I can't eat food I don't like. You will know it. I will not hide it. I'll be like, this is disgusting. Never come back on the show. Uh, that's like, also, that's, look, like, that's where the acting comes in though, right? I know. I know. <laughs> I would agree. Exactly. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, yum. <laughs> yum, 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 yummy. But then you oversell it. Oh my God, it's the best food I've ever had. Yeah. And then, well, yeah. like, what if you, oh my gosh, giving food poisoning to the host of a show? You're not coming back. Okay. Not again, right. not saying you would. This is just thinking like how ridiculous it's, eating these someone are all else's things food. I, I worry about. Yeah. yeah. And like, I mean, like, like you bring, um, you're bringing all this stuff and how long does the food sit out there? You know, this is stuff I think about. Well, well that's the thing, right? Like the, the, the whole setup part of it is, is it's a whole day, right? So, yeah. and we don't film until like later in the day. So it is sitting out a long time. So I am nervous about that. And sometimes I have to cook for the audience. Like, oh, the audience hasn't tried it. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, so it's, 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 it's like, it's, t it's tough. Like you, uh, like I'm thinking about a lot of things. Um, but again, the, like the team has your back. So if there's something where you're just like, I don't know if I can do that. They'll like, they'll help you, you know, like they, they will definitely be on it. It's great. It, it always, it always works out. I feel like it, yeah, I feel like it will. Everyone's a pro. And if not, there's some, someone who will figure out how to save it. Yeah. Or just edit it out. Right. And then we'll just yeah, have to yeah. redo that little part of the show. Part of the yeah. segment. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, there was no cooking segment today. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, I don't think that's ever happened, but I wonder what they would do. I don't know. I honestly feel like you're a harder critic on yourself than anyone else. I've, I I enjoyed all the little clips I saw. I'm like, these are great. Yeah, I enjoy them. Thank you. Yeah, no, definitely I'm, I'm a critic. Oh my gosh. Like that's, I'll, I'll watch it and I'll be like, yeah, not good. <laughs> the the inner voice. I'm still I'm still trying to. That's another thing I'm trying to work on because it's it's hard not to criticize yourself, right? Like you're constantly watching these uh, like other people, you know, online and all this video content, and you're just like, ah, oh, I wish I could be more like this, and I wish I could be more like that. Not to say that I say I want to be this person because I I do really feel confident in myself, and also like I really believe like there's only one you, and that's yeah. the, the you that people want. If they wanted them, they would hire them so I really do feel that but it's still it's still you know I still criticize for sure well okay so I'm gonna throw a question at you what would make the perfect food segment for you like what would you be a hundred this was amazing I can't be better than this I'm fabulous well I, I mean I do I, I want to be more chill and I want to be able to um like have banter with the host mm. um mm. and like you know be able to like it's the banter it, because I'm you know so... what I think you should insist on a, sh a sous chef then you know what I mean and be like I, I I'm these are my recipes someone else cook for me I'm yeah. good at banter uh, yeah I wish I, I like honestly like there's but then but then there's the times when they do have a food stylist like I've done other morning shows where they've had food stylists and you're not as invested in the segment because someone right. else set it up. So although you're like, okay, this, this, and that, I mean, it is, it, it is nicer, but it's just, it's different because someone else set it up. So I don't know if it's necessarily better because it's not it's, the way it's, you Yeah, you're right. It it's just different. It's, yeah. It's, it's different. Because you have yeah, more, so. more of a control around the environment. So right. I feel a little more comfortable if I had set it up. And, I get that. The, and this is my problem. I'm very, con like, very controlling when it comes to I'm that not gonna stuff. Judge. So I get that. Yeah. yeah. So, so like obviously being less controlling in a food segment would be awesome. Like just being a little more chill. One day, I, it'll happen. I love that a food stylist is a job because you see everyone's beautiful food photos on Instagram. I was going to do a comedy about it, but it just didn't resonate with me. Uh, but they, like the food looks so good. And it's not, you know, I, I put it on my plate. I go, it doesn't look like that on TV or in these pictures. I don't know what right. you guys are doing to the food. I don't know if you're <laughs> using chemicals that I should not be using to make it pretty, but it's, it's you know just what? a beautiful it's a ton of work. It's a ton of work. Like working when I st first started in this and I was doing magazine shoots and I was doing food styling and photos. And I was like, I don't think I can do that job full time. Like I know people who do it and love it, but it is so much work and takes such skill. I am not great at food styling. Like if you told me to like make something look like super pretty, I can't do that. Like I feel like certain people have that skill. It's like an art. Um, I can make things look clean and like presentable, but it, like if I had to make it, you know, like prop styling and, and, you know, backgrounds and all that stuff, it's like next level. Um, I, I'm watching yeah. Top Chef and they're using the little fine tweezers to add the sesame seeds. And I go, Woo, but this is it. I just, right. I'm sure and, it's going to taste and, the same wherever the sesame seed is. I don't, I don't know. And I think that's, 
that's why people like TikTok because I feel like Instagram, I mean, it, it's good if you have all these skills. Like I have all the skills to take photos, to do video, to do food styling, to do like, like creating videos. Like it's good that you have all these skills, but a lot of people are intimidated by that. And honestly, like don't even, even try it because it they just it's so daunting to them so i think when tiktok came out it's like easy like this is me in my kitchen this is what it looks like Buy it. and people did and it's good and like now you trust certain people and it's just like who cares about the food styling who cares about these big bright pictures like that's not what it's about right it's about like the quick recipe and and that's it but i feel like things have become so overproduced it's it's like i i would be if I were to coming into the like the industry now, I would be like, I don't know, like that's I'd probably have to hire someone to do that. I don't think I can. It just seems like a, a lot, lot of yeah. yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot. But I never really, really made that comparison, TikTok versus Instagram for food. I, I never picked up on that. Yeah, that's... Instagram's a lot more visual. Like I think it still is. Like yeah, although there is still, like it's getting more, it's it is more video based, like ninety percent, but it's still visual. I think it's still very visual. Um, I think that's what people look for in a good uh, Instagram food post. That, again, yeah, that makes sense to me. I, I like I like a good looking food. I guess. Right. Right. <laughs> it's no. It's 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 so like to me. It's so funny because I love taking pictures of things, but now there's such a stigma. I find oh, you're taking a picture of your food. What are you going to share it? I go no. I just. I just want to remember what I ate. I, I, you don't know. It was a, looks like a really well presented meal. This is just for me. Am I not allowed to do that? Like, this yeah, is photo I for know me. there totally is. And then, like, I still see people like rolling their eyes and like, I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I, I know, I like, I do a little sneak photo. Do. Like, I didn't do that. Like, sometimes yeah. I want to show my husband. Like, look how nice they presented this meal. Isn't beautiful. Exactly. And like, it also like I get inspiration when I go to like different places, and I'm like, oh, I want to try making that. So like. I'm, I'm always taking pictures of my, even if it's like something I made and I'm like, I want to remember this for like when I need a meal idea, <laughs> like always, like I'm always. Yeah. If anything, you know, like you're, you're, uh, being stigmatizing me for, you know, having a bad memory and that's rude. And now I'm triggered. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I, okay. So I have a question because you're very, you share, um, like the, you have Crohn's, right? I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, how does that work with doing so much food stuff? Because so is there I, not dietary restrictions with Crohn's or what? I was confused by that. Technically, technically no. So the, um, like I was diagnosed only a year ago. Uh, oh, wow. And, okay. Yeah. And it was only, it was, it was tr like, I, it doesn't really run in my family. Um, so it was trauma induced, uh, just a lot of stress and, and right. everything. Um, so it's still fairly new to me. Um, technically, I mean, there's things that trigger Crohn's, but I'm on medication and I pretty much eat everything. I mean, I stay away from spicy food and things that would hurt anyone who doesn't have Crohn's. Um, so I stay away from those things, you know, like fried foods and I try not to eat too much of it. It's all balanced, right? Um, as for restrictions, I don't really have any at the moment. Uh, eventually I might get to a point where if like I have, you know, something going on where I, I can't eat fibrous foods or something like that, then I don't. Mm. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it hasn't really been restricting all that much lately. Uh, when I first got it, I was scared. I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to get a blockage and die. So I was like eating nothing. And then I, you know, I talked to a dietitian and she's like, can you eat please? <laughs> like you're allowed to eat. And it's actually better if you eat because then we can figure out what is like affecting you mm -hmm. so now mm -hmm. I, eat, I eat everything um crohn's like the main thing is stress so like it's like very stress induced so like if i have to always keep my stress down like that's the number one thing and you know given my lifestyle and life and you know how much i work and i've got kids and all that it's it's that's probably the biggest challenge in my life is to keep balance and like not stress about things it's hard because because there's so many things to stress about, you know, like there's right? no shortage of things that I can stress about. I right. wake up exactly. and I'm stressed, you know, right. it does, I don't wake up and like, let's start the day Disney princess vibes. No, I wake up and here's my first thought and I'm stressed. I can't. And that's the thing. And then when someone's like, don't stress, I stress even more because now I'm stressed about being stressed. The and worst it's like, thing to tell someone, don't stress. Right? 
yeah so i i have i i'm practicing like now that dance is on hiatus my plan is to practice like yoga and meditation like really practice it because i feel like i i'm definitely a good candidate for something like that i've been doing like um immersion therapy like hot and cold plunges or sorry hot uh, cold plunges with like sauna i see therapists so like there's there's a lot of things that i do to manage the stress um and i'm gonna i'm gonna i plan on doing a lot more of it to really find balance and and really get my crohn's under control yeah it's uh, i only asked about crohn's because I, I used to do pelvic floor physiotherapy so i would it's like everything's connected with your health and i was just like oh you're you know your diet and what you're eating and i'm like oh yeah what's going on and then you talk about you're doing physical activity you're showing your stuff i like, go oh, she's making 40 look fabulous i don't know <laughs> i don't know how do you have, I, like honestly, the amount the, of the energy physical, the physical activity uh, the physical activity is basically like what saved me. Like it's, I haven't worked out this week cause I've had like a bit of a cold and I've just w been waking up feeling really crappy and I only work out in the mornings. Um, but physical activity, like even over dancing, honestly, is saved me. It's the only thing that keeps my system in check, keeps my mental health in check is like, like a, a good Peloton or like uh, I'll do like a, um, I have like the sweat app and I'll do like a good workout. That's like the best thing. Always. Never fails. There's something that like when you push yourself to a point where you go, oh, I can't do it. Oh, I did it. I'm accomplished. Nothing else can bother me today. I'm great. That's exactly it. If I get nothing done, I'm good. Like it's fine. That's, but you did get yeah, something that's... done. You worked out. So there you right, go. Right. Right. And I feel really good now. It's so true. Like, and uh, like uh, the days when we used to go to the gym, like and and work out, um, it was so much harder. And now it's like you have no excuse. I literally roll out of my bed, put on my clothes, and jump on the bike. Like there's no excuse. I was gonna say you don't even have to. Clothing is optional if it's in your <laughs> home. I mean, it would be very yeah. uncomfortable, but it is optional. Yeah, no one share the <laughs> bike. That's a uh, the one bike per person kind of vibe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's. Great. It's like, do you ever reflect and look back and go, oh my gosh, this is what, like, did you see this journey for yourself? Because it, it is a journey from what you've described. Well, I feel like the, the TV stuff and the food stuff, I feel like, like I used to watch City Line. I used to watch Marilyn Dennis. Like, I loved all, and I oh, loved this her, she's shit. ending soon. So it's good that you, uh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah. Like, and, and like, I, I love like cooking. I loved like I don't watch it anymore, loved cooking competition shows. So like, I always felt like I was meant to do that. I really do. Um, Cause I've always loved it. Just never got into it because of like, you know, the money or like, I don't know, like I just didn't know why I didn't get into it. I just didn't. And so like, I always felt like this was something for me. Like it was something that I definitely was always supposed to do. Um, and I remember like being a young girl and my mom always saying, oh, she's going to be an actress. She's going to do something. She's gonna, like, I can just see it. And I, I almost think like your parents kind of like, like, like they tell you these things and like with the hopes that you'll become it, you know, she passed away when I was 15 and uh, those things weren't being said to me anymore, but I still ended up on TV, you know, and I'm not an actress, but like, you know, I do TV stuff. So it's kind of interesting because I was a really shy kid so I don't even know why she said that <laughs> I was like deathly shy I was like what why is she saying that like maybe she's saying it so that I won't be shy I don't know um but yeah, if you had the personality you have now as a child I can see it you just there's something there's like this inner joy you have that you exude okay well thank you um I I, I definitely was I think it was, it's, I'm like very much like my son. Now I see it because my son is living like, like he's exactly like me. If you ever meet him, it'll feel like you're talking to the same person. Um, but it's like the excitement. Like I am excited about everything. <laughs> it's like, I, I find myself annoying. I'm like, oh my God, I have to chill out a little bit because these people don't care about that. And I do. <laughs> so that's why I kind of love social media too. Cause it's like, this is my own space to be excited about whatever I want. And the people who gravitate towards that or who like that, who are excited about those things as well, will DM me and we'll have a conversation about it. And it'll be great. <laughs> it's true. I get, I love that. I, I think there's something really special with getting excited by the little things, you know? Like I see new packaging for something. I go, oh my gosh, this is so fun. You know, this is my little thrill of the day. Yeah. Uh, like, ooh, rebrand. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah like anything really like yeah and and Ooh, social green light. Like, yes best day okay <laughs> and and even being social like I was always I, I was shy but I was still I loved family events I loved going out with friends like I was I loved social events like I looked forward to them that's I hated being home um and it's I love being home now but I, I still need the interaction with people it's something that like I've always loved I mean, and you're good at it. So that helps. Thank you. You know? Well, no, I, you. I mean, great. I think it's, especially since like COVID, you know, I feel like I needed a couple months to kind of go, um, uh, hello, uh, this is my, my name. You know, I don't know how to talk. Yeah. I was used to a square on Zoom. Uh, do we shake hands? Do we curtsy? What is a yeah. uh, fist pump? What are, what are we doing? That's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. weird. I, I was thinking about that today. I'm like, we actually went through that. Like that was, that was crazy. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I mean, look, people are still wearing masks, right? It is what it is. Like, it's, uh, I don't know if it's ever fully gone, but hopefully if you're vaccinated, oh, this is getting political, but uh, yeah. vaccinated. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then we went down a COVID ramp. Uh, yeah, it was, I think it COVID kind of helped people prioritize what's important to them. Uh, personally, for me, I just kind of worked myself till I, you know, uh, overworked. Uh, then, I did uh, the exact same thing. You know what I mean? I did the exact like, same thing. Oh, this is opportunities. I can't pass up anything. And then, oh God, I'm exhausted. Why do I hate my life? Ah, right. let's do this again. Cycle after cycle. So that was not healthy same. for me. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't end for me until COVID was done. I was like on fight or flight because I had just moved back into the home and I was just like already dealing with a lot. And then COVID, I was like, this is crazy. So like my life didn't actually like balance out until I got diagnosed with Crohn's and was like, well, this is my yeah. body telling me that if yeah. you don't calm the F down, you're going to die. So like, it's that was, true though. I, I was literally forced. Like my body was like, if you don't j change something now, you will, you will definitely not be living past this year. Like that's how bad it was. So I think like, like those are like little reminders we have to look out for is like yeah. overworking is never good for anyone. It's true. True. Well, I yeah. mean, look, I, I know that you have the, an agent now that people can contact you through, right? Did you yes. always have that agent or like, are you still always hustling? What? So I actually met uh, for the first two years, I did it all on my own. Um, but I just found the background work was so much work that I didn't have time to actually work. Like pitching people, the accounting. Yeah. Oh my God, the negotiating of the contract. I was like, this is insane. Yeah. So actually, out of nowhere, Jordy came to me, um, Jordy with Pluchino Culinary. She, at, I knew her through Mark McEwen, the chef Mark McEwen. She was his old uh, Mark, like, yeah, assistant. Sorry. Yeah. So like she, we've met at a couple events and then she was like, hey, I'm doing this now. Would you be interested? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> like it came at a point where I was like, I need someone, but I don't really know if I can afford someone or if, like whatever. Um, anyways, she came to me and she explained how it works. And I was just like, this is exactly what I need. And now eight years later, I'm still with her and she's the absolute best, biggest cheerleader. I would not be doing even a third of what I've done without her. Like, like she literally does all the stuff that I can't do. <laughs> so I, I love, could just work. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's finding people then, that, that help you grow. That's amazing. You know, people are always like, oh, an agent takes part of like your earnings. Like, you know, they take a commission. Obviously, they're doing yeah, it, like right. they're doing a lot of friggin' work, right? But like people don't realize like, no, it's actually like a write off. Like you can write off what you're paying your agent as agency fees. So like, or as commission. So like, why, why is that a problem? Like, it's not a problem. It's actually great. <laughs> it's just another write off for your business. But it's like, all people don't understand. So like you're giving like you're not taking away time that you, you don't want to spend that exactly time, right it. you know it's, it's so much work yeah. exactly like my my time is valuable and like she is now doing all this stuff that I didn't have time to do and I'm just able to work now and mm -hmm. it's great oh that's especially like for eight years that's work. impressive eight years yeah to be with an eight like well done yeah yeah she's uh she's awesome like I I literally leave everything to her she's so trustworthy and we were friends before so it's like it feels like it's a great relationship, you know? Yeah. Is that, I know we're, I'm going to wrap up because I know we're almost on our hour, but is there any like advice for people starting out? Like other than like, don't burn yourself to the ground, uh, you know, don't overwork yourself. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> really learn the hard way. <laughs> well, I think definitely like asking for help. 
like is it it has gone like such a long way for me you know just finding the right people and and surrounding yourself with the, the people who you know that you can ask for advice from is really important um and just trying to go out and try everything like every opportunity like don't be scared of anything you know go, you get invited to an event that you think you should be at just go because you will meet someone there who will you know change something for you so just like be brave and and try and take every opportunity you can it's like if you want to be in this space if you want to do this stuff then you, it's what you got to do you can't just stay home and expect that these things are going to be brought to you on a silver platter you have to like go out and just and find them so i would like really like push people to try all new things go to different events meet new people and ask questions that's it i love that oh and you can ask me I, said, I love that all the time but <laughs> i i've helped like so many people like even people have come to me and they're like what should i charge this brand and i'm like oh this is this this is what you should be charging. Like that you should not charge any less than this. Like if we all help each other, it benefits all of us. People don't realize this. Like let's share this information so that we can all help each other. Like, so I'm very forthcoming with, uh, you know, if someone needs advice on anything in this industry, I am more than happy to help them. So anyone watching this, if you want to DM me, please do so. <laughs> yes, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do all the tagging of things. Uh, no, but that's great to not be a gatekeeper, right? To to want to see other people succeed because it's like you said before, there's only one version of you. And if you're not right for something, why take away that opportunity from someone who's better suited? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, I feel so like motivated, but also like, so I'm just so impressed. I, I didn't even be more impressed after talking to you. I go, I, I don't like just my mind has been blown. It's, it's like, <laughs> I always joke that, you know, how everyone goes, you can't have it all. I'm like, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Julie kind of is having it all right now. Like just kind of figuring out life uh, slowly and surely doing everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wish, I wish I had it all figured out. But thank you. I appreciate all your uh, support and wonderful comments. <laughs> they are very much appreciated. <laughs> I think it's honestly though, thank you for being so authentic. Cause I, I really resonate towards authentic people that are like putting good out there. And I, yeah, I just can't wait to see the next thing you do. Is there any, what's like, do you have anything coming up that we can all watch you at? Or just um, treat you online like I do. It's really fun. <laughs> I'm doing something for like uh, the W Network uh, next week, but I'm not sure when it'll air. Um, okay. But that's, that's pretty nice much the next thing coming up and I'm doing a, I have a few brand deals that I'm I'm working on right now uh that I'm doing content for that'll come out in the next month so that's it the regular life if we community. comment more on the brand deals is that better for you like do you of just course. write a bunch of comments okay <laughs> I'm just gonna I mean, like anything. write 30 Any comments <laughs> obsessed okay and any way you want to engage is always always helpful when it comes to that sort of thing but I, I don't like, I don't go crazy over that and like share and tell people, oh my God, please comment on this. I'm like, I need comments. Like, it's like, it is what it is. If you want to comment it, comment it on it. Like I want, I only want authentic comments. I don't want people to feel forced to have to comment on my life. I feel my brand is very forced. forced and uncomfortable and I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Oh my gosh, Julie, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Thank you everyone who watched this live. Uh, thank you to future viewers who will be watching this. Uh, any, did I cut you off? Is there any final thoughts you'd like to share? I feel like. No, well, thanks for having me. This was so fun. This was like a perfect Friday night lunch. For oh my me. gosh. <laughs> I love that. Lunch okay. Break. Well, thank, yes. yeah. thank you for sharing your lunch <laughs> with me too. I appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll talk soon. I guess. Have a great week. Oh weekend. yeah, fine. Whatever. Okay. No, have a great week. Uh, happy Cinco de Mayo for those oh, who celebrate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You should have had like tequila or oh, something. Oh, well. Just thinking that I know I'm like I don't know how to celebrate this. Am I allowed to? I'm Jewish. You're Italian. Like, are we not okay with that? Yeah, I chose not to uh, strategically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same. <laughs> okay. Have a good one. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>